Hey guys, it's Anna from Breitling Gardens and I'm so excited because today is the day we are finally going to transplant our hydroponic seedlings into our bucket hydroponic systems. Now, if you have not been following along on our hydroponic series so far, I do have a full video on planting seeds in rock wool for hydroponic planting, as well as a step-by-step -step process for the bucket hydroponic system, which if you are just starting out with hydroponic gardening, the bucket system is absolutely the way to go. Uh, so I will link both of those videos to this video as well, but it might be worth watching those first before you watch the transplant video today. I'm going to try to be as comprehensive in today's video as I can while still keeping it short and digestible as always. Um, so for today's video, we'll go over any of the materials that I am using to do my hydroponic setup and to do my transplant here, as well as the nutrients I'm using, how much nutrients to use, and how to get your water at the pH that you want it to be at. Without further ado, let's get started. So for reference, I started my seedlings about two to three weeks ago. Some of them are ready to be transplanted today, some are not. So we're only going to choose the ones that have some of those roots poking through the sides of my rock wool cubes. Those are the ones that we are going to transplant today. Now for the purposes of today's video, I'm only going to focus on the materials that I'm using to transplant my seedlings into their hydroponic pots and get them established for their first week. For any of the other materials you see in the this video today, they will be featured in the first two videos that I already mentioned. So check those out for the seed starting and for the bucket hydroponic system. There's really just a couple things that we're going to need to actually get our hydroponic systems ready for the plants. Um, first and foremost, you do need some water. I use tap water here because it is not chlorinated. We have well water at our household here, um, so there's no additives to it. It's taken directly out of the ground. It is basically filtered. Um, but other than that, it's perfectly safe for us to use with hydroponic gardening. Now, if you are connected to city water, it might be worth looking into um, just some all natural water. You can buy it at the store, but anything without chlorine is specifically what we're looking for. Now, in addition to your water, you are going to need a pH tester. This is a digital pH tester here. It works very well. It was really inexpensive. I will link it in the description below. You can also use a liquid pH tester. So this is a liquid pH solution that you will mix in with your water and then use a little test strip to test that with. It's a little bit more tedious, but a lot of people claim it's a lot more accurate than the digital monitors. So it's completely up to you and what your preference is. I've been working with our well water for so long that I feel very comfortable using it for my hydroponic setup. Now, it is pretty common that your water is actually not acidic enough. Most hydroponic plants want a pH of 5.5 to 6.5, which is slightly acidic. Seven is considered neutral. pH down is my top product recommendation if you do need to make your water a little bit more acidic to accommodate those plants. And of course, we're going to need a high quality hydroponic nutrient. I always recommend the Fox Farm brand. I absolutely love their liquid nutrients. Their Grow Big brand is actually the one I use for the majority of my hydroponic veggies. So we're talking leafy greens, herbs, tomatoes, peppers, anything in that genre. I use uh, Fox Farm Grow Big, which I will also link in the description below. You will also need some sort of hydroponic medium to put inside of your net pots. I love using the expanded clay pebbles. Hydroton is the brand on this one. Uh, this is probably my most common purchase when it comes to hydroponic gardening. These do come in a giant bag as you can see. You can also get them in smaller quantities if you have a smaller setup, but you have a lot of choices when it comes to hydroponic mediums. I do have a full article that I'll link to this video in the description below just to walk you through what options you have. And lastly, you are going to need a really nice measuring cup. This one here was actually like a Pyrex brand cup that we adopted out of the kitchen and it does not go back into the kitchen. Anytime you're measuring nutrients or anything gardening related, do not put it back in the kitchen. Um, so this guy does live out here now, but it's really nice. You do need down to the teaspoon and you want it to be a pretty accurate measurement. So find a measuring cup that's going to work for your needs and keep it right out next to your hydroponic setup. And of course, last but not least, we do have our seedlings. So there are a couple seedlings that are ready to be planted today. Um, this is a green bean here. He's been ready for a while, so he's gonna be the first guy that I plant. I also have a tomato, a pepper, a watermelon, which is new for me. I've never grown watermelon indoors. Uh, and then I do have some spinach as well. So I'm super excited to get these guys in their hydroponic homes. So let's get started. 
Now I do have four bucket systems currently set up. I've already tested out all the air stones. They are set and ready to go. Because I don't have all of my seedlings ready to go quite yet, I'm only gonna use two of my buckets today. I will use one of my four top or four banger lids here. And then for my larger tomato plant, I'm actually going to start him right out in the large bucket here. Now it is possible to transplant from the smaller into the larger. A lot of times these plants grow so fast in the hydroponic setups that it's not even worth it. Go straight into the larger buckets. So a lid this size would be appropriate for a large tomato plant or even a pepper plant. The smaller lids like this would be appropriate for like a leafy green or an herb type plant. My very first step is going to be to make sure these are filled up with water. We want them filled up almost all the way. Leave about an inch or two of space at the very top. Because I'm so prone to spilling, I fill mine up with a pitcher, but you can always just put it directly under the hose too. Now that I have my buckets filled to the level that I want, I'm gonna go ahead and test the pH of each bucket. Even though they came from the same water source, it's always nice to just make sure every independent reservoir that you have is tested independently. All right, and I'm sitting right at six for that one. And it looks like right at six for the other one too. So we should be right on target. Now, if it goes above six, that's usually when I want to start adding some of my acidity back into these reservoirs. So I will go ahead and retest both of these in a day or two just to see how that pH level is holding up. Before I put my plants in, I want to add my nutrients into the water before I put anything into the reservoir. I do have my Fox Farm Grow Big Nutrients here. Now on the back, it does have a chart for general feeding, two to three teaspoons per gallon of water. So these are three and a half gallon buckets, which means I'm looking for anywhere from six to eight teaspoons total for the entire bucket. Because these guys are seedlings, I just sprouted them two to three weeks ago, I want to go on the lower end of the nutrients. Once they start growing and they get into a larger plant size, then I can go ahead and increase that to more around the three teaspoon per gallon mark. So for right now, I'm going to go ahead and add six and a half teaspoons to each of these buckets. There's really no need to mix that up once it's in there. Your air stone at the bottom should do a great job of mixing all that up with the water. Now that I have my pH right where I want it and I have the nutrients in the water, I'm gonna go ahead and put my net pot or my lid right back on. For this particular setup, the net pot is actually integrated right in with the lid, which is super convenient. I do want to pay careful attention to this tube here, which is the tube that guides the air down to the air stone that's at the bottom of this bucket here. I want to make sure that that tube does not get pinched or it will cut off the airflow and then the oxygen supply to the roots of whatever plant I have in this container. So just be very conscious of that as you're putting your hydroponic medium into the net pot here. The hydroponic medium that I'm using is going to be these clay pebbles here. They feel just like little rocks and they're really easy to work with. They do have a little bit of dust to them, so just be aware of whatever is surrounding your hydroponic setup when you're working with the clay pebbles. The plant that I'm going to put in my larger nap pot here is going to be my green bean plant. He is a little undersized for a lid of this size, but I do know that he's going to grow really quickly and will be ready for harvest in usually about 90 days. So I'm willing to go ahead and use up one of my larger lids for my green bean plant. Now, when we plant our seedling, we're going to leave that Rockwell cube exactly as it is, and we're going to actually plant the entire thing right into this net pot. We want the surface of the Rockwell cube here to match the surface of your clay pebbles, which means we need to go ahead and backfill a lot of this net pot with some clay pebbles first before we put our Rockwell cube in there. Okay, I have my clay pebbles in there. One thing that I did notice is my water level wasn't quite high enough uh, for to reach the roots of this little Rockwell cube. So I am gonna go ahead and add a little bit more water to this one before I go ahead and transplant my seedling.
perfect. Now you're ready to deposit your seedling directly into your nut pot. Now you're ready to plant your seedling directly into your hydroponic medium inside of your nut pot. I'm just going to scoop out a little crater so that he can rest directly on top of that central channel that was inside of the nut pot. There should also be a little bit of water sitting right at the bottom of your Rockwell cube to make sure that this can absorb the water as it grows. Once you have your Rockwell cube seated and centered on top of that channel, you'll go ahead and fill in the rest of this circle with your hydronic pebbles. Now that I have my green bean planted, I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that process with my other four plants in my four banger lid. I of course ended up filling up all four of my buckets. I had way more seedlings than I thought I had originally, so I didn't want any of them to go to waste. So I do have two of my four banger lids full and then two of my single lids full, which means I have a total of 10 plants, which I'm so excited to grow hydroponically. Now I have everything planted. One word of wisdom, make sure that the water level of your bucket reaches the bottom of your rock wool cube or whatever material you did your seed starting in. This is really important. Otherwise your seedling actually will not get any water. Um, the clay pebbles do a good job of staying hydrated, but they don't wick in the same way that the rock wool cube would. So make sure the bottom of your rock wool cube is at least touching the surface of that water so it can wick the moisture up to your seedlings roots. My very last step is to go ahead and turn on my air pump, which will in turn push air through the air stones that are at the bottom of each of these buckets. I don't know if you can hear that over the camera, but I did just hear all of them turn on. I can hear the water bubbling at the surface, which is great. I am still gonna go ahead and lift the lids on these just to check out what's going on in there. When you lift your lid, you wanna make sure that there are healthy bubbles coming out of that air stone that can reach the surface of your water at the top. Do not be alarmed if you noticed some cloudy water that first couple times you check on your plants. This is from that dust that comes off of those clay pebbles. You can reduce it by rinsing the clay pebbles before you put them into the net pot, but overall these should not have a significant impact on the growth of your plants. My hydroponic garden is officially planted and ready to grow. I will come in here weekly to change out the water, add in new nutrients, and just overall monitor the plants. In my next video, I'm going to go ahead and address how to change the light cycles and your nutrient levels depending on where your plant is at in their own growth cycle. So for right now, everything's at the seedling stage and as they develop into the flowering and vegetative stage, we are going to go ahead and adjust some of our levels to accommodate that growth pattern within the plant.
If you have any questions regarding my hydroponic process or growing hydroponic plants indoors using the DWC method, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you enjoy learning about indoor hydroponic gardening or gardening in general, please subscribe to our channel for the next video. Set up your alerts if you do want to follow along with our hydroponic indoor gardening series. The next video will launch in about a week. Thank you so much for watching our video today. As always, it helps out small businesses like ours so much for viewers like you to tune in, and I hope to catch you next time.